in our pride of NASCAR, we tell you the life story of the legendary drivers that have made up this sport. With the driver that we are remembering tonight, we wanted to do something different. Seven-time champion Dale Earnhardt Sr. was the best in anything he raced at Daytona. One of the biggest wins of his career came in 1998 at the Daytona 500. So many stories have been told about Earnhardt Sr., but the incredible emotional stories that you are about to hear from the crew members that helped him to victory lane that day have never been shared. Our Marty Snyder had a chance to sit down with the crew behind one of the greatest moments in NASCAR history. This is the half a lap to go. Four car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Coke down on the inside. Whoa. Earnhardt has Earnhardt. problems. It looked like Earnhardt had a tire go down maybe as he went into the turn. To come so close so many times, was there ever a, a, a time when you guys said, this is never going to happen? We'd go down there and we'd win the 125 and we'd win the Bud shootout and we'd win the Saturday, right? We'd win everything, but we wouldn't win the 500. That's what hurts about about that place, you know. It's just so there's no other place like there. They can talk about Indy and Charlotte, but Daytona's the place to win. To be so close, so many times, be leading it and get flipped down the back stretch or, or crashed or uh, passed on the last lap or something. It was uh, those were the heartbreakers. Well, I almost think he was starting to question, you know, is it meant for me to really, really win this race? You know, because everything that could happen had could happen. He basically won somewhere within three to go. He was somewhere near the sniff six times and never pulled it off. Was there anything different leading into that weekend? I remember the little girl coming. Uh, and brought the lucky penny. Wessa Miller, I believe, is her name. It was a little girl from Make-A-Wish Foundation, and her Make-A-Wish was to come to Daytona, see the Daytona 500, and meet Dale Earnhardt. He stops, looks at Wessa, talks to her, she hands him a penny, and it was a penny that, in his mind, changed his day. I remember him getting that epoxy himself and gluing that penny on the dash of that car, and it's still there. He said, this is special, not the lucky penny for us, but for her. Let's do it for her. On track, after a week of practice, the three car had been nearly perfect until happy hour the day before the 500. We'd been really good the whole time down there. I mean, we, had, we could pass anybody, do anything. In that last happy hour practice, when we put the race motor in, we weren't that good. Got ready to practice, and he's leaving pit road. He doesn't even get up to high gear going through one and two. He said, something's wrong with the engine. And we all made the executive decision, you know what, that's why we bring spare engines. That's a development engine that uh, was really intended to go to a later race, and uh, we had uh, taken a little chance there. Well, anytime you make a change for the Daytona 500, it, it's big. It's pretty nerve-wracking. Good news is we put that engine in. First lap at turn was when they dropped the green flag. And to start the 50th anniversary season of NASCAR, the 40th Daytona 500 is underway. You start, he pretty much dominates the race, doesn't he? It was one of those days where the pit stops were almost flawless. The car was almost flawless. Uh, I don't know that we made very few adjustments on that race car. It was, it was a half a turn here, half a turn there, half a pound of air here, half a pound. Was there a point at, at which you were worried about the race? Probably the, the biggest nail-biting moment was on the last caution that came out with about 25, 30 laps to go. Uh, everyone pretty much had to pit for fuel to get to the end of the race. I just felt in my mind, without ever second guessing, we needed to do two right side tires and get at least a full can of fuel in that car to go then. Dale was always a four tire guy. Radio communication back to Larry and Richard was I can't believe we took two tires, but I'm gonna make the dang best of it. And he did. Earnhardt has the quick pit stop. It'll be Earnhardt leading the charge off pit road. Before the last restart of the race, Bill France comes on the radio. <laughs> I think we've got maybe one to go before this, what ended up being the last restart. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice, hey, Sunday Money, this is Captain Jack. For those of you who don't know what that meant, Sunday Money was Dale Earnhardt, Captain Jack was Bill France. And I'm about to go berserk, because I have no idea in my mind right then what idiot is on our radio. But I can just remember Larry McReynolds' look on his face 
was who in the heck is Captain Jack and why is he on my radio? And Richard, I think, looked at me and he could tell I'm fixing to blow a gasket at whoever and he's going, and he's pointing to the tower and it's like, oh, I get it, Bill Jr., yeah, Bill Jr. But anyhow, it was a short, quick conversation. He said, hey, Sunday Money, this is Captain Jack. Don't you think it's time to go snag that big one? And uh, that, man, that was something that, you know, I'll never forget because I think that made such a statement uh, about how much this sport needed him to win that race. Two laps to go. And there's trouble coming off a of turn two. Some cars get trained It might be this. Whoever gets back to the start finish line, they'll get the white and the yellow together. Right when the when the race was really over, the, you know, the caution flag came out. And I was devastated. I thought, man, what's going to happen to the engine? Is it going to make it all the way around the racetrack? You know, what's it going to be this time? We got to the point to where we're just waiting for something to happen. I mean, you know, you're sitting there, OK, a meteor is going to come out of the sky or anything's going to happen. Even though I think everyone was celebrating in, inside that you knew not to put a period on this thing till that three car absolutely went under that checkered flag. 20 years of trying, 20 years of frustration. Dale Earnhardt will come to the caution flag to win the Daytona 500. Finally. Uh, the emotion level was just so high, such a relief. Uh, we jumped off the wall, and, and I looked over, and there's chocolate, and, and I seen a little couple of tears. You know, for me, it, it's just thinking about uh, all the, the, the hard work, all the people, all the people that, that sacrificed. Those were just tears of, of joy for a lot of people. There, there are popular wins in the sport. Was that the most popular of all time Sarah, stood on in the garage no, area? No one else has won that 500 and had entire teams of everybody out there to congratulate Dale Earnhardt coming down that pit road. Never, ha never happened before, never has happened since. Probably is not going to happen again. When, to win that race and to see the people come out there, all the people, all those other guys, whether they, they loved him or hated him, they respected him. And when they walked out there after we won that race and he come down pit road, and there's never been a more special moment in, in the history of this sport, I don't think. Did he ever tell you the 98 Daytona 500 was the greatest moment of his career? Dale had this look he could put in his eyes that would, would stare completely through you or it'd make you melt because you knew it was a happiness look. And he had that he had that look in his eye after the race. I'll never forget the look in his eye. The Daytona 500 is ours. We've won it, we've won it, we've won it.